Pharrell decided to go direct to consumer. Physical music is up 10.5% in general. That's more than streaming. It's trending in another direction. We also have to get literally going direct to consumer. You don't need a million of people to make a million dollars. If you're a new artist, I don't think you understand that. DIY. Okay, DIYers, over the last week, in the midst of all of the controversy with the battles and just all the stuff in hip hop news, Pharrell released a surprise album that unless you were on his email list, you probably didn't have any idea that he released it. The interesting thing about it, though, you're not going to find it on any streaming platforms. Why is that? Because Pharrell decided to go direct to consumer with his new project. D-D-D-I-Y. Good stuff. There's an article here on Hype Beast because it wasn't a whole lot of stories about it, but I did think it was really interesting for him to make that decision. The album is called Virginia Black Yacht Rock Volume 1, 10 songs in total. And the article goes like this. Pharrell Williams has quietly dropped a new album titled Black Yacht Rock Volume 1. The 10 track album appears to be an ode to his hometown of Virginia calling it a city of limitless access, only available to listen via the album's website, Black Yacht Rock. Let's open that up while we're here. Fire. So it's just literally the play button and download here, download the whole thing and an email list. I wonder why he didn't put that behind a, uh, an email list to where you'd have to put your email to download it. Who knows? Maybe we'll hear about it soon. Uh, Pharrell releases the album without the help of any streaming platforms. Those who have listened to the album might akin the release to listening to a Pharrell only radio channel. Some of the tracks in the album include Richard Milley, Cage Bird Free, 1111, and Going Back to VA. The website to listen to the album is simple, providing all the tracks as audio recordings. Each song is available for download as is the entire album as a whole. There is also the option to join the mailing list. Those who have joined will receive an ominous stay tuned message after submitting their email. As of writing, Pharrell has not posted on his social media to promote the album. It appears to be a lucky find for those who have caught wind of the surprise release. Have a listen to the album here. So what this feels like is a soft launch of possibly Pharrell's direct to consumer plans of the future. It's I'm telling you, this is something that if you were following this channel for some months, you know, we've been talking about it for clear over six months about the direction that a lot of these folks are going with a lot of things being in limbo with streaming. Now, there were some people who were talking about it on social media, one person specifically being an individual named Rob Abelo. And he has some really, if you're ever on Twitter on X, uh, definitely go follow him up because he has a lot of great information about direct to consumer and independence in general. So he says, Pharrell just released a full album and it's not available on any streaming platforms, only direct to fans on his website. It's time to go direct. Be the platform. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. And he also made the same comment that I was thinking about as well in that one mistake is he didn't get emails, SMS for access. One email is worth 1000 streams. So I'm assuming that's more so for those of us who don't have the luxury of such an illustrious and popular career as a Pharrell. And also, I don't think that Pharrell in any sense is hurting for the money. Um, are hurting for needing emails. He has many different businesses that are doing well. So this very well may be, in my opinion, a um, soft launch to see the metrics on this for free, right? No agitation, no obstacles. He gets people to come to the website. They download it. He gets to see what numbers, what songs are doing the best. And maybe this even is a testing ground for him to see what song do you want to release as a single on streaming platforms. Something else that's really interesting about this direct to consumer industry that we're in right now. Here's some stats that got pulled where he says US recorded music grew 7.5% to 17.1 billion in 2023. Biggest year yet. If you look at these numbers where it said streaming is up 8.6%, physical, physical music is up 10.5% in general. That's more than streaming. It's trending in another direction. Vinyl is up. 10.3% CD is up 11.3%. That is above streaming. Sync 7.4. I don't know how this calculates, but download is negative 12.3. Uh, maybe perhaps because there's devices that don't support direct downloading like an iPhone to listen to it unless you get an app or whatnot. He goes on to say, if you go deeper, there's a shift underway. So somebody else here in the comments said, so happy to see streaming growth slowing 
and physical taking off again, a good sign for the future in my opinion. And he said, you see what I see, I have more coming on that trend. Man, it is a sign that we're not the only ones that see all the madness going on and we feel like we need to make some dramatic decisions. For those who don't know, I removed my music from streaming platforms because I started to understand one, I don't need the numbers and metrics that they say that I need in order to make a decent living doing what I love. Two, I felt like me not being able to determine my price gave an opportunity for me to put my music on my website or on a band camp, have it at one price, but then also if I put it on streaming, I was undercutting it because they get to determine whatever price that is, plus pay me 0.003. Now, something else I want to draw your attention to is kind of an elaboration on that point of how many people you actually need to find success, especially in this age as we are we are starting to see more and more artists go direct to consumer. Here I present a video from New York rapper, really dope lyricist, 38 Spech. He has an interview where he's talking about you don't need a record deal or a large fan base to make money from your music. A few fans, you got a career. Mm -hmm. See, these people don't understand. Y'all looking to make a hit and get signed and get famous when all you got to do is get a few people that actually like you and then you can start supplementing whatever income you was focusing on or getting from anywhere else. You don't need a bunch of fans in order to make a living for yourself. You need a bunch of fans to feed everybody else. You understand? Mm. But just to feed you, you don't need that many people. Like, if you was in the streets and you had a phone hitting... It wasn't that many people calling your phone. It wasn't that many people coming by your... You know, let's just be honest, Thank though. You. It wasn't that many people coming by your place of business, but you still were surviving and maintaining. Mm -hmm. This is the same. You don't need a million of people to make a million dollars. You understand? Once I realized that I could get a buck from a person, that's all I needed to see. Let me just provide the service and make sure, because if it's you people that's willing to spend some money with me. It's a million people that will. I love the fact that these conversations are becoming more and more mainstream. So 38 Spech is basically lining it up for you that people who are artists have different business setups, different business infrastructures based upon what their needs are that determine whether or not things like streaming are a necessity, that determine whether or not they want to put their focus elsewhere. Now, so many people steal. And I notice it's people who I know they're not going to find success in direct to consumer because of how small they're seeing this whole thing. If you're a new artist, I don't think you understand that what you see streaming has been over the last X amount of years. It's changing. Matter of fact, as of uh, April 1st, maybe you didn't realize <laughs> that Spotify change. Remember that Spotify that we, we, we talked about this months ago that they were proposing it's officially underway, ladies and gentlemen, where Spotify will not pay you if your song individually does not reach a thousand streams annually. So much for those of you that have a large, large catalog and you have songs that are sleepers or haven't been promoted in some time, you will no longer be getting paid for those if they don't reach a thousand streams annually. So that's going live as of April 1st. Ironically, around the same time. <laughs> Not by mistake, Spotify has chosen to hike their prices again and introduce a new subscription tier in the process. Nah, and I'm still not content till I'm dominated in every single continent. My shit go stupid, you don't think then use your common sense. I did your wire and I know that I'm a brother. When they play the new king, all the DIYs go crazy. All the DIYs go crazy. Seeing the direction that things are going, one thing that Rob Abelow said on his platform on Twitter that I thought was really interesting is that Spotify is not in the business of selling music. They're in the business of selling convenience. And that's something they do really, really well. However, you have to figure out in your business model, how do you sell convenience to the best of your ability, choosing to go an alternative route, perhaps in direct to consumer. Now, there is a super fire. Shout out to my guy, Doc Ellery. He sent this to me. There's a super fire interview on the R&B Money podcast with Jay Valentine and Tank. And they had Marsha Ambrosia on here. And she was expressing some of her frustration with where things are at and how music is not as profitable as it once was. And Jay Valentine dropped some gems. I got two timestamps I want to share with you. And then we'll get to some final thoughts. I we were just talking about this. It has to be negotiated. But who starts these conversations? <laughs> like... Well... 
ultimately we have to. Yeah. But you but we have to do it in a sense outside of the major corporations. We have to we have to start it from an independent sense of saying, I will not give you my product. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like I don't care. Right. It's the same thing as if 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 you're Nike and Foot Locker is saying, well, we want to sell your shoes for this. This is what we want to give you. Right. And you being able to say, no. I don't want to put my shoes in Foot Locker. I'm going to put them in Champs. Right. And you have to you have to at make that. Cost. Right. At, right. Yeah. at this cost. Right. At this cost. Right. Yeah. So and I think we also have to get into the, the super fan space mm -hmm. of literally going direct to consumer. Mm. So what he's basically alluding to is that that is the future of not just established artists, but also of independent artists, up and coming artists, which I always separate. This is going to be a business model that if you say, you know what, I don't think that my business is designed to be structured like those who have found this kind of success on social media. I think that I lean in more so on this being more music based in my presentation, in my product, in my packaging. This is what I'm going to structure my business as for success. You get to determine that. But one thing that cannot be ignored is that everything is leading to direct to consumer. Even when you talk about UMG breaking off from TikTok and now there are rumblings or there's actually press releases that are out that UMG <laughs> and Spotify are coming together to build out their own social media platform that is going to give tools and make it available for artists that are looking to promote their music and put up snippets and all these different things that they're talking about doing. They themselves are going direct to consumer. They're in combination with a Spotify, but they're going more direct to the consumer. Like you said, <clears throat> you have to decide what you want out of it. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Every musician, every artist, everybody has to decide what they want out of the gift that God has given us right. and how you want to utilize that gift because mm -hmm. there's certain and I tell people all the time too that you know I was like in this in this new day and age for a new artist because how does a new artist break and how do, I was like there's no you know I can't tell you how to break but what I can tell you is that you have an opportunity to give your music directly to the people right that we never had before we've never had that I'm thinking he's not lying he is not lying <sighs> I hope whenever it comes to you seeing this content that I'm putting up, whenever you hear me championing doing direct to consumer, I hope you understand that this is a luxury that I'm able to even say this to you. First of all, that I have a platform to share that kind of information. Second, that I have proof of concept for me as an independent artist myself to say, hey, I've tried this out multiple times. I have history in doing direct to consumer through my career earlier as an independent artist. I think that we have a unique opportunity here. And if we use it wisely, we can see success that the average independent artist who was at our level, say in 1998 or in 2005, they would not be able to enjoy the benefits of having access at a click's notice on a social media platform. They would not be able, like, as much as you hear up and coming artists say, you need to establish audience for direct to consumer. It's so ironic that you express that opinion on a platform that didn't exist 15, 20 years ago. It's so outrageous that you could say something like that, get 40 something retweets, get 75 likes on that, and you're literally not seeing you have access that artists have never had before. And you have an opportunity as an up and coming artist, especially as a more established artist that has somewhat of a following, to if you don't quite have that audience, now you saying, hey, here is my business model. I'm just gonna boost a post that is doing really, really well organically right now and put myself in front of other people if one person buys your album, let's say you have a five dollar album. Let's let's go let's go back here to the uh, to the go the good the good old uh, what is that stream calculator? Let me pull this up real quick. If somebody chose to go get your album and say you sold it for five dollars, you recognize that that's one thousand four hundred and seventy one streams just on Spotify, and you do recognize that if you're dealing with something like a Bandcamp, you get that money the next day correct? Or if you have your own website, maybe you're using PayPal as the payment gateway, you recognize you get that money instantly, right? Not the three to six months that streaming has you wait, not after your income has been cut and chopped down and divided up as a pie system, as if you're in the same, as if you're a part of the same company as the Taylor Swifts and the Drakes and the Adele's who get a larger piece of that pie, which that pie in itself is only up to $500 million. We're not in the same business. Yet we are dividing money up like we are. That to me 
is a call for you to see whatever that you can do to make it possible for you to just sell one project. That is going to give you so much to work with. That's if you're just selling it for $5. Now imagine you got one supporter that paid $100. That would have took you 29,412 streams. Going back to what we heard from 38 Special, you don't need that in order to make a sustainable living, making music, reinvesting back into the equipment that's gonna make your music even a higher quality, investing into the people that can make your music sound even better, the engineers, the producers, the singers. But you gotta at least leave yourself open, just like any other business out here without any customer coming to the store. You gotta put your banner up, you gotta put your sign up, but that stuff costs money. What better way to do it than the thing that's probably costing you the most money to produce, which is the music. Just some things to think about. You're seeing all these legends who are seeing that. I just hope that you're not late to the party because you let your own insecurities stop you from even trying. Those are my thoughts though, DIYers. Let me know what you think. DIYers. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.